Hello and welcome to the 12th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to learn about the different types of level scripts and how to properly use most of them. This video will be broken down into the following segments. What is a level script? How do I decompile a script? And how do I make a script activate the instant a map is loaded? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will be creating an event that incorporates two distinct level scripts. Whether you realize it or not, every time the player walks into a map, some immediate script or even multiple scripts trigger. These scripts, called level or map scripts, can be used to set up NPC placement as the storyline progresses, set and clear various flags, or trigger a big event the moment the player stumbles into a new map. I opened Cerulean City in Advanced Map and selected the Header tab. Under the Map Script section, there are a bunch of buttons and values that we need to cover. The script number box tells us how many level scripts exist in the loaded map. Cerulean City only has a single level script, so this box is grayed out until we add another. The Remove and Add buttons will remove a level script entirely or add one to the map, respectively. The Open Script button will open your preferred text editing program and let you see what commands the level script uses. This is known as decompiling a script, which we will get to very soon. You can tell Advanced Map what text editor to use by clicking on the Settings menu item, then clicking Choose Script Editor. I personally don't use this button, but you can if you wish to do so. The Save Map Script button will save any changes you've made. In addition to these buttons, there's a multi-choice box which allows you to select one of many types of level scripts. Each one of these types serves a different purpose, and we will go over them soon. The Script Offset box is similar to the Script Offset boxes we've utilized in the past. It tells us where the level script is stored in the ROM. This is a good point to start looking into how each of the different types of level scripts should be used. Instead of making a bunch of these, we'll just decompile Game Freak's code. To do this, copy the 6 digit offset in the Script Offset box. Open XSE, then open the ROM you're decompiling from. Yes, you can load ROMs into XSE as well as scripts. From here, paste the offset into the offset box, then click the decompile button. Some code should have appeared. This is a great way to see how the original scripts were created, and you can learn a lot from decompiling various scripts in the ROM. Even NPCs and script tiles can be decompiled by copying and pasting their offsets into XSE. Right off the bat, we can see a comment with some hyphens after it. This is just how XSE likes to distinguish separate sections of code. After every pound org, you'll see an offset instead of a customly named pointer, such as at talk or at move player. These offsets are showing us where the different sections of code are stored in the ROM. This isn't a big deal since we can follow the code by referencing the hex values throughout. Let's start examining the commands. On line 3, the set world map flag command is used. This allows the player to fly to whichever map is being set. You can find out what each map's hex value is by decompiling the type 03 level scripts and noting the set world map flag values. I don't think this command exists in Ruby and Emerald, those games just use the set flag command. On line 4, a flag is checked. If it has not been set, the script calls whatever code is at offset 0x8166484. There are three commands at this new offset. The move sprite 2 command can be used to move an NPC around the map. It doesn't permanently move a sprite, contrary to what XSE's built-in command helper suggests. The move sprite 2 command only works in a level script or when the targeted NPC is currently hidden. The regular move sprite command is used when a sprite is currently being displayed on screen. I had a good discussion about these two commands over at Poke Community. I'll post a link to that thread in the description of this video if you want to read more about these two commands and how they work. Did you notice that every one of these commands are just background things and they don't actively do anything that requires the player to quit moving? The 03 level script type is used to do these things. Check flags, mess with sprites, and other under the hood work. We can see this exemplified even further if we decompile some other type 03 map scripts. If you want to see exactly what's being hidden or moved, you can easily follow the code and switch between XSE and advanced map to follow what sprites are being targeted and what commands. Next we'll discuss the type 02 level script. If you recall, the moment the player steps out of the truck into Little Root Town, he or she is forced to jump off of it and an event with the player's mother is immediately triggered. This 02 level script simulates this event. Notice that there is a flag box with the value 4092 in it. This isn't actually a flag, it's a variable number. 
Just like how script events have a variable number and a variable value, so do type 0 2 level scripts, since they're essentially the same thing. You should know how to use these two boxes after watching the last video. When working with type 0 2 map scripts, ignore the first script offset box and instead use the second one. We'll copy and paste this offset into XSE. After loading the ROM in script, tons of commands are displayed. If you scroll through and follow along with the script, you should quickly realize that this is indeed the jump out of the truck event. The thing I want you to focus on is the sheer variety of commands used here. Not only does the script check and set flags and variables, but it also does more noticeable things like display dialog, move sprites, use the apply movement command instead of something instant like move sprite 2, and lots of other things. Type 0 2 scripts are what you'll be using whenever you want a noticeable event to occur as soon as the player hits new territory or revisits old territory. You'll have to keep variable values and everything in mind as well so the script doesn't play every single time the player attempts to enter the map, unless that's what you want. Level script types 0 2 and 0 3 are used most frequently by hackers and you can make a whole game just using those. Now we're going to cover the less used types. Type 01 is dubbed the set map tile level script. This is used when we want to dynamically restructure a map depending on what point the player is at in the storyline. We'll hit type 01 in much more depth after we go over the set map tile command in a future video. Type 00 denotes a null map script and doesn't do anything. Type 04 is used in the player's bedroom in Pallet Town. When the player starts a new save file, he or she starts facing upward at a television set. The type 04 script is what makes this orientation happen. There's not much information on this level script type, but in general it seems like it's best used when the player is warped somewhere and you want to set the player's or an NPC's behavior or orientation before the screen fades from darkness to normal. Type 05 and 07 are hardly ever used. I wasn't able to find any instance of them in the maps I checked over, but if I get a hold of any more info I'll be sure to let you know. For now, I'd say it's safe to pretend like they don't exist since you could make a full hack without ever touching them. Now that we're finished skimming through the different types, let's whip up a quick Type 02 level script. There's something you may need to do after inserting it. All my script does is display some dialogue when the player enters the map. The script's variable value is then set to 0x1 so that it does not repeat itself. After the script is inserted and configured, select the Save Map Scripts button. Next, hit Ctrl H on your keyboard while you're still in the header tab. This will show some more technical information. Under the Map Options section, copy and paste the script offset into XSE. Before clicking the Decompile button, click on the Level Script button right next to it, then hit Decompile. This will make some extra information pop up in the script. If you see a command that says pound raw word 0xfffff near the top of the script, you'll need to change it to pound raw word 0x0. Sometimes this is already done for you, so you might not have to go through this extra bit of hassle. I think it depends on what version of XSE you're using. The bottom line is, if you see the 0x FFFF value, change it to 0x0. If you don't, don't worry about this decompilation step and continue. If you left the value at 0x FFFF, the level script would never end and a series of strange symbols would scroll across the screen until you reset the game. Click the Compile button to overwrite the previous script data, then close the Compiler Output box. Shown on screen is the level script I just inserted. As you can see, a message box is displayed immediately upon entering the map. If we leave then reload the map, the script no longer activates since its corresponding variable was set to 0x1 instead of 0x0. That's everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Using the information we've learned, we will create a Type 02 level script and a Type 03 level script. The Type 02 will simulate an event the moment we step into Pallet Town. The Type 03 will clear some flags and show some previously hidden sprites only after the Type 02 script has concluded. I want to discuss my teaching style throughout this video. I didn't show many examples of me actually writing level scripts. This is because they are mostly the same as other types of scripts, only they happen instantly and you have to go through one or two additional small steps to get them to work. The event I'm creating on screen right now should easily be enough to get the point across. This brings me to my main point. If you're ever curious about something that's already in the game, like what's in a level script, you should always decompile the script yourself and do some investigating. Most of the time, this approach will be so much quicker than going online and asking others to do the work for you. 
I already mentioned this in my first tutorial, but I wanted to reiterate it because I think it's important. On another note, I've been skimming through the rest of what needs to be covered regarding scripting. There are quite a few more topics to be discussed, and we'll get to them all eventually. What I wanted to bring up was that there may be some commands that I don't end up talking about because of how rare or obscure they are. I may also skim over certain commands that don't get a whole video title named after them, such as the move sprite and set world map flag commands mentioned earlier. Because of this, it may be difficult to use these videos as a reference for certain bits of information. If you come across a command that you think would be beneficial for you to use or understand, I suggest first checking out XSE's built-in command help menu. I talked about this in my first XSE scripting tutorial. If that fails, I suggest decompiling an already existing script to see if you can use context to figure out its functionality. If both of these methods fail, I suggest you head over to Diego is Awesome's comprehensive XSE scripting guide on Poke Community. It's got most of the commands spelled out for you along with an example or two for the majority of them. I'll post a link to that thread in the description of this video. We're about at the end of creating this script. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Poke Community or right here in my video's comments section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 13th installment of this series.